what's going on everybody happy friday out there hope we all had a wonderful week and hopefully we're getting ready for that weekend as we begin to kind of conclude the work week here and right now out there a lot of us are seeing some rain some of us are seeing some blue skies and some of us are seeing kind of a mixed bag of weather as we have a front crossing on through the country now obviously that is a pretty um, important thing to talk about in this video but more importantly we're really going to break down some big time changes we're seeing in the models for our big storm next week that again will impact a lot of travel for many of you during that Thanksgiving holiday and it looks like the pattern will stay quite active going into Thanksgiving weekend and beyond to start our December. So a very active pattern ahead and a great way to stay up to date on that pattern is by subscribing to the channel. So definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you're always up to date with the latest info that I have and again I try to get that info out to you as quickly as I can and uh, also comment let me know what you're seeing out there as this front's crossing on through and let me know what you want to see as we go into this Thanksgiving holiday and uh, tell me if you have any exciting plans as well. Alrighty, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into that forecast as again, a lot of very important things to discuss in this video. Alrighty, so starting with satellite here like we normally do. Again, right now, uh, the, here's that front that I've been talking about crossing on through the country. Already crossed through uh, St. Louis, crossing through Chicago, getting through Indianapolis right now, through Little Rock, uh, into sections of Ohio, seeing some of that rain as well. Now, uh, for us folks here into kind of the eastern seaboard from Maine down the I-95 corridor into Georgia, uh, still kind of waiting for that front itself to move on through, but we're also seeing some clouds as we're kind of stuck in between that cold front and a very impressive low pressure system off the coast. So again, everyone kind of east of this cold front is seeing clouds, even if not directly due to that front itself. Now, taking a look at radar imagery, again, due to this front, we are seeing some lift in the atmosphere, and with that, some rainfall here through much of the Ohio River Valley this afternoon, saw some pretty nice rain, also raining up near Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, up into Syracuse, New York, and kind of the following areas, or surrounding areas, I should say, as this front's moving on through. Now, kind of south of the Ohio River Valley, you'll notice not too much rain with this front. Unfortunately, uh, this front's kind of dying off a little bit as it continues to push eastbound, so most of the rain and precipitation that we are seeing is really kind of uh, centered further up here towards the northern side of the system uh, compared to the southern side where it's a lot drier, which unfortunately uh, is kind of the one place we really could use the rain down here through Tennessee, uh, the Carolinas, Virginia, where we have some pretty big wildfire problems going on. Unfortunately, that rain's just not quite making it that far south with this guy, but hope is on the horizon for next week that we do get enough rainfall to finally put a dent in some of this drought conditions that we're seeing through much of the southern half of the country. Alrighty, so um, that's kind of looking at current conditions. Let's go ahead and time this out over the next day or so as this front continues to push eastbound. Again, we're seeing the uh, rain where we just looked at on radar currently. If you're still kind of east of that front, expect that rain to begin to move in as we go through the next uh, 6 to 12 and 24 hours. So going into about 10, 11, uh, midnight tonight, uh, you'll see this band of rain continuing to push eastbound, getting into much of New England, into central Pennsylvania, kind of uh, near State College and into Harrisburg and even all the way down uh, kind of towards sections of West Virginia and Virginia. Now we could see some rain form further south of there but I think a lot of this rain you're seeing on this map into sections of Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, North Carolina and Southern Virginia is going to be very hard to come by. So we'll hope that that does happen but unfortunately just not a lot of lift that far south. Now, by the time we get into tomorrow morning when you're waking up, most of us should be much nicer with bluer skies behind that front, cooler temperatures, uh, and drier air. We could still see some scattered showers up into the northeast and maybe even snow showers uh, for some of you folks up into Maine uh, as that front continues to push on through. But I think tomorrow afternoon, as depicted here, likely a very nice day for just about everyone here east of the Rockies in the lower 48 as high pressure really kind of anchors over the region. And we get a nice 24 to kind of 72 hour stretch of nice weather. Uh, before things once again change going into that Thanksgiving week. All right, so rainfall to come here. Again, I think maybe upwards of another inch of rain for you folks into Pennsylvania, New York State, especially those higher elevations up in that area. But outside of there, really not much more rain to come uh, as this front swings on through pretty quickly and continues to weaken as it pushes eastbound. All righty, so... 
And now let's go ahead and discuss next week, which I'm sure a lot of you are kind of here really for more than what we're seeing right now. Uh, so we're going to start here with a 500 millibar height anomaly map from our Euro Ensemble members. So again, I've talked about this in the past couple of videos, but what this map really shows us is just kind of where we're seeing that cold air and that troughing in the atmosphere. So uh, kind of as we move this ahead, you can see uh, this is that front that's passing on through right now. By the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, we will definitely have some cooler temperatures as depicted by this blue on this map kind of here in the eastern half of the country. Um, as we move this ahead though into early next week, that blue is going to fade and we're going to uh, see our next big area of troughing develop back towards uh, the Four Corners region. And this is what is going to lead to a big time storm during the early part of next week. So by the time we're going into Monday and Tuesday, you'll notice this trough continues to really uh, amplify out here over the Southern Great Plains. And with that, we're likely to see low pressure develop uh, here along that trough going into early next week from Monday and then continuing to track north and eastbound by the time we get into Tuesday afternoon here and Wednesday afternoon. And by the time we get into Wednesday afternoon, that's when the cold air is really going to crank up for us folks here into the Great Lakes region, uh, into sections of the northeast, and also likely when that lake effect snow machine will really begin to ramp up for some of you folks uh, up into that part of the country. And uh, that cold air could hang around a little bit going into uh, Thanksgiving Day and the following days when we likely see another storm system development with uh, more widespread cold air as well by the time we're getting into the couple of days after Thanksgiving itself. So that's kind of the latest picture from our Euro Ensemble members. Alrighty, so the next thing I'm going to show you here is the Euro model itself, as well as our GFS model, and this afternoon, uh, we're seeing some pretty stark differences between the two, so we definitely need to kind of talk about that, break them down, I'll tell you uh, which model I'm kind of leaning towards right now and why that is. So, we'll start with the European model here, uh, again, kind of moving through this weekend, again, a very nice Saturday afternoon, pretty nice blue, uh, clear skies, maybe some cloud cover, but definitely not much rain out there by the time we're hitting Saturday afternoon, and that continues into Sunday afternoon before uh, Sunday evening that next storm system that we've been talking about cranks back up here over the southern Great Plains. So I think Sunday afternoon and evening expect some showers and storms to begin to develop here kind of in the plains before uh, going out into our Monday morning and afternoon. That storm really begins to kind of gather itself uh, here again kind of just still sitting over the southern Great Plains but Going into overnight Monday and into Tuesday, you'll notice a storm really begins to take effect here on our European model, beginning to deepen that pressure dropping and kind of uh, gaining very, um, you know, pronounced fronts with it as well going into Tuesday morning. Now, by the time we're hitting Tuesday afternoon, this storm's really strengthening, moving up through the Ohio River Valley, bringing with it rain, potentially even thunderstorms, some of which could become strong to severe through uh, the southeastern part of the country and a big old shield of rain on the other side. Now, by the time we get into later Tuesday and into Wednesday, we still have leftover cold air from this current cold front in the northeast. So uh, as the storm system moves into the northeast, we could see some snowfall break out for some of uh, the interior sections of the northeast as depicted by this model, but still mostly rain for most folks up and down the I-95 corridor going into Tuesday evening and into early Wednesday. And again, some of these could be even thunderstorms uh, as we get some instability in front of this line. Now, uh, going into Wednesday morning and afternoon, still seeing some of that snow into interior sections of the northeast, but uh, this front kind of begins to clear out by the time we're hitting Wednesday afternoon, and you'll notice a very tight pressure gradient of cold air begins to move in behind that low pressure system, and we see pretty well below average temperatures, as well as very strong winds coming off the lake, including lots of lake effect snow here for sections of um, uh, Michigan, into Erie, uh, Pennsylvania, into kind of the normal trouble spots in New York there near Buffalo where we also likely could see some lake effect snow going into the day before Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving Day itself before things calm down at least for a little bit and we potentially get another storm system going into uh, the weekend right after Thanksgiving. So again very busy week ahead we still have to get through this big first storm uh, but we could see even more unsettled weather after that one moves on through. Alrighty, so that's the European model. Let's take a look at the GFS model now. And again, you'll notice kind of starts about the same. Going into Sunday, uh, we see some kind of storm develop out into the southern Great Plains. That continues to strengthen and move off by the time we hit Monday. Uh, but you'll notice whenever we're looking at kind of Monday afternoon and evening here, quite different picture from what we just saw with the European model. The European model had very pronounced low pressure system kind of over Arkansas and had, uh, you know, 
plenty of thunderstorm and rain activity with it. Uh, GFS model is a little bit later on the development of this cyclogenesis and kind of waits until, um, you know, we get into later on into the week and really not too much of a storm system here with the GFS model. Now, definitely still a storm, still some rain that moves on through the southeast and then through the northeast, but a lot less energy to work with. And uh, with that, uh, the GFS kind of waits to develop any kind of real center of low pressure until it gets off the northeast coast going into Tuesday night and Wednesday. Now, if we were to see a scenario like this unfold, um, we could very well see some snowfall into the northeast well further, or excuse me, much closer to the coast than maybe our European model suggested. And that European model, again, had a lot of warm air advection that was kind of you know, digging into that snowfall chances, but a GFS model here, not too much of a storm system and uh, could allow maybe a little bit more cold air to work its way in there. And also with the GFS model, less um, energy left behind the storm system. So less of a lake effect snow story. And the GFS waits to form its big time storm until kind of the weekend right after Thanksgiving. So again, a very different picture here than the European model. Now, um, uh, right now, I'll tell you, I'm leaning a bit more towards the European solution. Uh, one reason for that is the ensemble members with the GFS kind of don't really agree with this operational run as much. They're a lot more kind of on board with the European model. So right now, uh, I stick to kind of the first map I showed you, but definitely we'll have to watch for trends. If the GFS is onto something, uh, maybe the Euro kind of jumps on board to that camp tomorrow. I'll definitely uh, keep you updated and let you know with that. But right now, I'm going to stick with the European solution as I still think that's the most likely scenario. Um, now, if the European solution is right, then you'll notice uh, as we go into this weekend, definitely uh, still some cooler temperatures no matter what behind that first cold front that's moving on through the country right now. Uh, but once we get after this big storm system next week, a lot of blue takes over the map just in time for Thanksgiving Day. You'll notice a widespread below average temperatures anywhere from uh, potentially 5 to 10, maybe even 15 to 20 degrees below what they should be this time of year uh, for much of the eastern half of the country. But I think really, especially if you're kind of up here in the Great Lakes region into the interior northeast, I think this is where we have the best shot of seeing a very cold Thanksgiving day. So um, definitely watching that area, but areas further south of there, I think definitely uh, cool off at least, even if not necessarily cold, uh, definitely cooler than what you'll probably see as the storm system is moving on in. Alrighty, so let's talk about some snowfall now. Uh, again, this is the GFS ensemble members. So I just showed you the operational GFS model, and you're, if you're watching from Michigan, uh, maybe into sections of Pennsylvania and New York where we were talking about that lake effect snow, you're thinking, well, the GFS just showed basically nothing. It showed a weak storm moving off the coast. Uh, but again, the ensemble members still pretty gung-ho on the idea of potentially some impressive lake effect snow. So especially for you folks up here into kind of northern Michigan, uh, kind of near the Erie and Buffalo area into Pennsylvania and New York and into upstate New York and even into the interior northeast, uh, again, pretty good shot at seeing some snow next week, I think, especially with that lake effect uh, snow kind of cranking up behind this storm system. Now, for those of you folks kind of maybe not on the lake and uh, looking at the last map and said, well, there was blue kind of at the front end of the storm system, that's very possible as well. But if we get a very strong system, we're likely going to get a lot of warm air to kind of flood in and take out that snow line. So I think a lot of people up here could start as some snow, maybe a little bit of sleet, uh, but likely changing terrain and then potentially changing back to snow on the back end. But if I'm a snow lover, uh, I really want to be kind of in one of these places that are likely to see lake effect snow uh, later next week. And of course, we'll watch the trends on that. Again, if we get more of a GFS solution from the deterministic run, could see less of that lake effect snow. But again, the ensembles here are uh, still pretty well um, agreeing with the chance of some of that lake effect snow. European model and its ensembles uh, agree as well. Again, kind of hot spots for some lake effect snow here uh, going into uh, the middle part of next week and also potentially some inland snow as well uh, as that storm system begins to move on in later Tuesday and into Wednesday. All right, so the Climate Prediction Center still agrees that we're going to see some cold air, very high likelihood of below average temperatures for Thanksgiving Day and the weekend following here, especially in the Midwest and Great Lakes region. But everyone east of the Rockies here uh, just about has a higher chance of seeing below average temperatures compared to above average temperatures. So uh, still feeling pretty confident on that. Alrighty, so again, that's the snow, that's the severe weather. Unfortunately, we do have to talk, excuse me, that's the snow, that's the snow, well, let me think. That's the snow, that's the cold weather, there we go, that's what I meant to say. Uh, but we still have to talk about the severe weather, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so again, this time of the year, anytime we get a very potent storm system to track this far south and this close to the Gulf of Mexico, we do have some instability overlapping with wind shear concerns to worry about. 
So as we move this ahead kind of into starting really, I'd say uh, next Monday, you'll notice Monday afternoon here, we're definitely getting a bit of a plume of some instability. So kind of down here through Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, having the chance to see maybe some of that thunderstorm fuel as this low pressure begins to develop. And as we move this ahead into our Tuesday afternoon, also seeing kind of a thin band of that here into Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, maybe even Southern South Carolina could see some thunderstorms and some severe storms as we go into our Tuesday afternoon before uh, the severe weather threat really dies down and we should have a really nice Thanksgiving day uh, for just about everybody. Alrighty, so because of that, the Storm Prediction Center does already have a marginal risk out for kind of central Oklahoma and the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas here on your map. Again, this could be really all hazards from tornadoes to large hail to some damaging winds here on Sunday afternoon and evening before going into Monday. That threat shifts off further towards the south and east into much of Louisiana, sections of southern Arkansas, and a pretty good chunk of Mississippi there as well. So again, watching all those areas, and as we get a little bit closer... Uh, we'll really be able to fine-tune that forecast for severe weather and that snow forecast as well. All right, so kind of just to recap a little bit here, again, we are seeing some changes in the models, a little bit more disagreement than we had yesterday, but I still feel really confident we're going to get a big-time storm next week to really bring some uh, snow for some people, some severe weather for others, and potentially some much-needed rainfall as well for a lot of folks who really could use some rain, followed up by likely some well-below-average temperatures through the Midwest and Northeast, and potentially even well-below-average temperatures further south of there uh, into the Ohio River Valley, maybe even the Southeast, but more question marks on how cold we get the the further south we get uh, for our Thanksgiving day before again going into the days after Thanksgiving could potentially be doing it all again with another storm system. Alrighty, so again, I know a lot of kind of information in this video, so if maybe there was something I didn't answer or you'd like me to elaborate, uh, definitely ask me in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as possible with an answer uh, to whatever question that is. Uh, with that said though, again, have a great rest of your Friday night and I'll see you all next time.